This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, this is the last lecture on transfer pricing. In the previous lectures, I went through uh, what it is, cost plus, what the problems are, how to fix a sensible price, and the uh, rules for a sensible range of transfer price. But I did ask you, I don't know if any of you watching actually did, I did ask you to have a go at example eight, because uh, it's normal rules, but they're um, it's just a little bit unusual. So have a look with me. A is capable of produce, of making two products, X and Y, and both products can be sold externally. So they can either sell product X externally, they can sell product Y externally. Uh, there's information there about the external selling price, the variable cost of production. A has limited labour available, and you've got there the hours. There's unlimited external demand for both the products. Division B requires product Y. So although A, given there's ex unlimited external demand, A can sell everything it produces externally. B wants Y, well of course they are capable of producing bit there uh, Y, and selling it to division B. And as I say, they are capable of producing Y, obviously, and selling it to B. But the question is, what's the minimum transfer price that should be charged for supplier Y to division B? Well, our first step is this. Forget division B for the moment. If division B didn't exist, what would A prefer to do with its production? Uh, they can sell X or Y, so as I say, forget division B for the moment. Selling externally, you've got there the car, um, selling price, the cost, the contribution. Well, the contribution per unit, X gives 20, B gives 30. So, uh, uh, sorry. A and B, X and Y. So Y gives a bigger contribution, but remember with limited labor available, that will limit how many we can actually produce. Uh, and the labor hours required for each product, the hours per unit, A requires five hours. Sorry, I keep saying M, B. X requires five hours, B requires 10. And so still forgetting division B, this actually is a little key factor problem, which was on the lectures way back. Uh, but, you know, if we had 10 hours available, you could either make one Y and earn 30, or with 10 hours you could have made two X's and earned 40. Or we choose between in this sort of situation based on the contribution per hour. And so every hour spent making X's, we get 20 for five hours, every hour making X's generates $4. Every hour spent making Y's, 10 hours to make 30, makes $3. And so y, X, rather, is the best use of our limited hours. There's a limit on how many hours, so there's a limit on how many we can produce of anything. Because the demand's unlimited, I'd, if, we, if there was no division B, we'd prefer to make simply product X, sell them externally, and we'll be generating $4 per hour. However, there is division B. Division B wants some Ys. Obviously, we can make Ys, but if we do make Ys, Every hour we spend making Y's for Division B 
It's taking away hours that we would have used to make product X to sell externally. We will produce Y and sell to the other division, but the minimum transfer price will charge Well, first of all, you won't sell Y to anybody for a price less than the marginal cost. So the variable, the marginal cost of producing Y is 70. Again, you'll have to charge more than 70, whatever happens. In addition, though, every hour we spend making Ys for the other division. It's taking up some of our limited hours, which means we have less hours to spend doing what we would have done, which is making X. How many hours does each unit of Y require? Each unit of Y requires 10 hours. If we weren't doing uh, Y for the other division, how much per hour would we be earning? Well, because we'd be making X, we'd be earning $4 an hour. And so making Ys for the other division is losing us contribution of 40. And so the minimum transfer price is 110. A will have to charge more than 110 in order to be prepared to make Ys and supply them to Division B. Now, if that makes sense, great. If you're still at all worried, just look at this. We have the choice of X and Y. X gives a contribution of 20 a unit. Uh, it took five hours, and therefore the contribution per hour was four dollars. We've been done that already. Making X's generates four dollars an hour. Uh, as far as Y is concerned, I've said we're prepared to sell to the other division as long as we get at least 110. Well, if we did charge 110, the contribution per unit, well, the cost would stay at 70, so the contribution per unit would then be 40. How many hours does uh, Y take? It takes 10 hours. And so if we do sell at 110, what's the contribution per hour? $4. So provided Y gives a contribution of at least $4 per hour, I'm quite happy to make Y instead of X. How can we make sure Y gives a contribution of at least $4 an hour? External people won't give it to us. But if the transfer price is 110, if B is prepared to pay 110, then we are getting $4 an hour. And I'm quite happy to make Y instead of X. Uh, anyway, I've said enough there. That was a, um, I was going to say a trick question. It wasn't a trick. I think it's a nice one. And that, in fact, is why, all the way through, I've said the minimum transfer price is the marginal cost plus any lost contribution. Uh, but eight wasn't arithmetically hard, but clearly because of the wording, it takes that much more thinking. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Uh, as always, do have a go at the multiple choice test, uh, test which are very much using the basic rule. But do make sure that you look at um, past exam questions and questions in your revision kit, section C type, um, where the problem, I mean, some of them have been quite tricky, upset people, but the problem hasn't really been uh, uh, any harder arithmetic or any extra rules. It's been much more sorting out, you know, with more words, sorting out exactly what's happening.